I understand the next call is a split call. Uh, Carol Beaumont, five minutes. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. Um, I don't often get to speak on taxation bills, so um, it's interesting to uh, speak on this Taxation Annual Rates, Employee Allowances and Remedial Matters Bill. And as others have said, um, this is a bill we're supporting to select committee. We have some reservations, but clearly we can look closely at those matters in the select committee. And there's been some very good contributions, I have to say, from this side of the House on this taxation bill, because um, the previous speaker, um, national speaker, Mr Hayes, is talking about fairness and taxation. Well, we'd all say that that was a good idea, but unfortunately, uh, the government's uh, practice to date shows no sign of looking at taxation in a fair way. What did we see when this government was elected? But, of course, substantial tax cuts for the very, very wealthy. Um, we also see, um, and what we're seeing here, is that there are huge amounts of unpaid tax dollars, a billion dollars in tax going unpaid. Um, over 300 individuals, around 300 individuals, owe over $1 million in unpaid income tax. Well, how many wage and salary earners have unpaid tax? I'll tell you, probably zero, because they have to pay. It's taken out. Pay as you go. But basically, well, pay as you earn. So we don't have a fair taxation system. Those who are on wages and salaries pay every single dollar that they have to. As others have talked about, small business people, including some people who don't even know that they are small business people, as my colleague um, Mr Little talked about, who are um, so-called contractors, often find themselves having difficulty with taxation issues and owe comparatively small amounts, which isn't to say that they shouldn't pay them. But they, they don't get away with having this sort of money unpaid. Whereas at the other end of the spectrum, we see very substantial amounts owed by a comparatively small number of people, or as Mr Cosgrove calls them, the big end of town. Well, actually, these are matters that should be looked at by the Select Committee if we are serious about fair, fairness and taxation. Now, this bill, um, and I believe uh, was related to matters formerly uh, raised by Peter Dunn, will um, tidy up some changes, some of the petty rules that were implemented under Peter Dunn, namely the tax on plainclothes police officers and the accommodation tax on earthquake rebuild workers. So that sounds like a good thing to be doing. Um, and also apparently is related to the Foreign Account Tax Compliance Act, something I don't know a great deal about. But these are things that clearly um, the Select Committee will be able to work on. But I do think that the matters that have been raised on this side of the House around where the emphasis is on fairness and taxation, on, um, you know, the government would spend millions of dollars intruding upon the privacy of solo parents who are under suspicion potentially of fraud than chasing up people who owe millions of dollars. So let's get that on the table at the Select Committee and look at those things. And I do find it interesting, just to conclude, that we've had a couple of members opposite talk about um, needing to have taxation reform so we can grow the economy. We're going to grow the economy, there's going to be more jobs and better incomes. Well, there's been slight evidence of that. 40% um, of New Zealanders got no pay increase last year. We've just seen um, important research come out on child poverty in this country. So uh, fine words, but very little action. Speech. I call Julianne Genta. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.